Welcome back, coaches. This is the Football Coaching Podcast. I'm Daniel Chamberlain, co-host. Here with Joe Daniel, as always. What's up, coach? Three years now, I think officially, like somewhere in June, somewhere, when I started this way back when with you. Like 150 podcasts. It's, it's a bunch. Um, We've had almost the same intro, and sometimes I feel bored with it, but then it's so good to just have one to lean on. You know, the funny thing is um, some people really like the intro. Um, I used to open the podcast with every single time you're listening to the Football Coaching Podcast, and that was the way it always started. Yeah. And I did hear from people who were like, kind of missed that. And I was like, really? Because it was literally just me saying the name of the show. And I would have friends who would listen to the podcast. And when we would be out, they would like mock me with that line. Right. You know, so now I don't get mocked because we don't have a, uh, that intro, but people like, uh, you know, people fear change and there's no reason to be afraid of a podcast. So we don't have to change. So I'm obviously a big Joe Rogan fan and I kind of like the way his just their mid conversation when they start. Sure. Obviously we couldn't do that here because I mean, we could. We right could. in the middle of all of our bullshit and before we hit record. Sure. But, uh, you know, we like to turn it on, hit the switch, if you will. Well, there's also the advantage that Joe Rogan has of nobody turns on the Joe Rogan pa- podcast just to, like, see what it is, right? That's we true. We find out who this Joe Rogan guy is. Yeah. Like, you know, people come to our podcast who are like, I wonder if there's any, you know, like, I'm going to be, a, I want to be a football coach or... I just got made a, a, a football coach because my son's team doesn't have any coaches. I just graduated from college and I just got my first teaching job and they're going to let me be a, a football coach on the you know freshman holders coach. And they go and they Google, you know, how to coach football. And this is one of the things that comes up. So we have people coming in who have no idea who we are. So we introduce ourselves. You, Daniel. I, Daniel. There we go. Both Daniel. Yes. Excellent point. Um, level up. You met someone today. What was your, you started and then you said, I'll talk about it. Oh, no, 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 no. no. That's a different thing. That's a, that'll come later. It's not your level up. No, no, no. no. All right. So I'm going to talk about my level up. Then okay. I'll, I'll let you figure yours out. Um, last week I asked you about, would you use an AI schedule? Okay. Now we're on to my level up. Okay. I started using Motion, the AI scheduler. I love it. I'll check it out. I've gotten more shit done just by having, I can't, I could show you. It's actually, this is the, if you're looking at the, if you're watching on YouTube, it's barely in the background behind me. But um, just because it tells me, go do this thing, or this is how much time you have available. I can still skip a thing, but it's so much harder. I've always not written down in planners because I'll lose them. Like I'll spend Mm -hmm. a week doing a one year, everything in it planner. Mm -hmm. And then I can't find it in two weeks. (laughs) So, um, but this is different. It's on the phone. It's on the computer. Obviously I do most of my work at the computer. I, I like it because it moves. If you miss something, it just moves it to your next availability and you choose when different things check it off in places. Yeah, it's where like I have always used um, Google Calendar. Yeah, but you know it doesn't move things. It's just no, there. It it's just there, and if you don't do it, it doesn't care. This thing's like, oh, hey, you didn't work out this morning. You also said you can work out tonight when your gym cools off. Guess what's on the schedule for tonight, big boy? So, so far I really like it. It's twenty bucks a month. We'll see if that's. It's probably worth. Hell, I pay thirty for Adobe. I make like ten graphics a week. I mean a month sure. or something. So. This is probably probably going to stick around for a while. I'll have a better understanding of it next week when we talk. But so far, so good. So that's my level up. I'm using AI to make myself more productive. I'll have to check it out. Um, so I did, you know, I down that path. That was what I put on on one of my things to do. Um, I do keep a, a bullet journal. Um, and I have now for... Five years, so I'm pretty fully into that. Um, I usually don't do it on the weekends, um, but 
I keep a bullet journal. It has expanded as I've, you know, it used to just be here's the day and here's, you know, a task list essentially. Now it has the day. And then I think I've talked on other podcasts about the entrepreneurial time system that I use where we have free focus and buffer days. So then it says what the day is. Is this a free day? I usually, again, on free days, I usually don't fill it out um, unless it's like a structured free day um, where I've got like free day things to do. Um, but then, you know, if it's a buffer day, if it's a focus day, uh, and then I've added in, um, gratitude on that. So I put three, three things that I'm grateful for, uh, each day at the start that starts the day. And then, um, and then from there, it's basically a task list with anything that is scheduled, uh, and then anything that is, you know, tasks that I want to get completed that day. I have a weekly planner that I do every week. Uh, and that has like the three main things that must get done. It has 10 more projects that we're working on, up to 10 more projects that we're working on Has a list of people that I want to contact lays out my, you know, free focus buffer days. It also includes a positive focus of the things that I've done last week that I'm, you know, that we accomplished to keep track of that. Um, so I do all that, but I use Google calendar and I generally don't fill it out. Right. So I'm interested in, I generally don't put stuff on Google calendar other than, um, I will put sometimes. So my Google calendar basically has in there that, you know, I, that, you know, from, from whenever the start of the day to 10 30, I, you know, five days a week, I've got my son. So that's blocked off, you know, sometimes I can sneak a little bit of time in during, a uh, you know, something show or something, but he doesn't watch that much stuff. So, um, so I did go and I started doing a little Google search on AI tools for planning. And I have been using the last couple of days, uh, basically after a little research, I found that a lot of people just said, you know, it's all based on chat GPT, put it in chat right. GPT. Okay. So I went to chat GPT. I upgraded to the $20 a month, you know, pro chat GPT. Um, and the first day I put in all the things I had to get done and it was like, here's your schedule. And I was like, no, it ain't <laughs> that ain't it. But we kind of, you know, I've, I've been working on how to group things and stuff. I can't just put 50 tasks in there and it comes, you know, here's my Google, Google calendar with 50 different five minute blocks on it. You know, it's like, that doesn't work. Um, I have been grouping those as, you know, buffer work and focus work, uh, and, and grouping that work together. So, you know, I personally know if I'm writing something that's focus work. So if I got a focus block, that's the thing that I'm working on. And then I will go in and say, this is this, this is this, this is this, but you're right. It doesn't. Um, and you have to, so basically with, with ch using chat GPT, you have to export it as a CSV file and then import it into Google calendar. So there's an extra step. So I don't know if I need an extra twenty dollar a month tool, but I would be interested to look at it because that does sound interesting. Something I like. But it's got a free yeah. week, so okay. free seven days for okay. free, and uh, yeah, you can group the things. You can tell it like podcast, right? We we podcast seven thirty to whenever on Tuesday nights. So I put that in there, and so yeah. it only makes it available those times. Same with the other ones on Sunday nights, about the same timeline. Um. So that way I'm not putting in in my work day because then it would be like, oh, I can't schedule this past 5 p.m. Well, that wouldn't make sense. So I have right. a podcast recording podcast schedule that it will fill. Uh, you can just do everything. So I think it's really neat. You can separate your days by 15 minute increments or some crap. So you can tell it if you have a buffer day, it could be that's yeah. 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Cool. That's the only time it'll schedule that stuff. So it's pretty I neat. Took it, so I started on that planning the workday schedule. And then, you know, I was in the pro thing and I don't know how I got onto it, but I was like, I have, I have, we just, uh, closed enrollment on the tactics transform, uh, transformation. Um, which I think is going to be a really cool masterclass. And it's something that, you know, we're creating as we go. And the tactics transformation is going to be a four week. It was originally a three week. Now it's a four week masterclass. And I'm very good at making out. We've talked about this. I'm very good at making outlines. I'm very good at, you know, but then, you know, planning the thing out, but then the execution of the th of thing. Um, and usually what I do is I write out the outline and then I send it to um, 
Shem or one of my assistants and say, you know, make a PowerPoint with this stuff and just put it in the power. We have a format and everything and it works fine. But it was Monday morning and I was planning on recording it Monday. I ran out of time. So it's recorded to, it's been recorded now. But uh, Monday morning, I'm like, I tried the, you know, thing, messing around chat GPT. And I'm like, can you make a PowerPoint from this outline? And ChatGPT goes through and it says, you know, and I, and I have, I, I wrote this all out in a Word document. So the first thing is basically like a, a, a 10, um, 10 keys to using adjustments to transform your program into the championship team of your dreams. And I just put that in and it's like, basically it, it takes that because I've typed everything out. I typed my, my, my brain out and it takes that and it makes bullet points. Point number one, point number two, it actually killed a couple points, decided to combine them. I said, don't do that. Um, <laughs> I'm not, you're not here to be an editor. Uh, you're here to be a summarizer. So I'm like, cool. And it's pretty good. I had to make a couple changes because, you know, I have little notations and stuff in there. And it's like, this is an important point. And I'm like, no, that's off to the side. So I delete a couple things, change the wording on a couple things. And then I said, okay. And it's just because you an outline. And it says, and I said, can you make a PowerPoint? And it was like, yeah, I got, you know, it did. And it was really ugly PowerPoint, really ugly. Like that, this is not the special. So what I learned through all of this is that you need multiple steps along the way. Chat GPT, you, you, you do one thing here and then you go over to another, you just open another chat GPT and use that window for this and use that window for this. So anyway, I said, can you make images? And it goes and it creates these images. Now, of course, three out of the 10 have a soccer ball in them. Of course. Like, Listen, bro, this is, this is not the right sport. This is the real yeah. football. But what I ended up with were pretty cool images. And so I'm like, make this a PowerPoint. And then it makes this super ugly PowerPoint with these images that, you know, some of them I was like, okay, take the soccer ball out. That's the wrong thing. And it makes a new image. And I'm like, okay, that's good enough. Good. They're just, they're kind of funky looking cool images and they're AI. So there's like weird things. There's one where it's like uh, two guys running the football, like one guy running the football and one guy behind him running the football. And I'm like, <laughs> funny. I left them all in. I kind of joke about them during the, during the filming. Um, Cause they're kind of, they're kind of humorous, the mistakes that they make. Um, but, but they're kind of interesting images They're You know, what do we normally do if we put images in, we go to Google images and we're like, are we going to stock photo images? And they're just guys playing football. And we can do things like, I was like, put a football cause you were doing adjustments and stuff. I said, put a football with a bunch of gears around it. So there's this cool image of a football with, you know, funky looking gears all around it. And the gears are half broken and stuff, but it, it doesn't matter. It's just kind of cool looking visuals. Um, so I take that and it makes this really ugly PowerPoint and then PowerPoint, of course, windows has their own AI. So right. PowerPoint's like, let me design this slide for you. And so off to the side, it's like, do you want it to look like this? And I'm like, that looks cool. And then the next slide, I'm like, that looks cool. And so each slide has kind of its own look, but they all fit a common theme. So using these multiple AI tools, we created what is, I think, a you know, not perfect, but a, more visually entertaining than the standard PowerPoint would be. Um, and then, so here's my last part of my level up. So then I'm recording it and I'm going through and I'm talking about obviously levers, levers principle is a big part of the tax transformer. And I'm talking about going to different sources for your ideas. It pops into my head. What if you just went to chat GPT for, and put, I said, well, you know, I said, maybe you could just go to chat GPT and search for like, uh, strong safety adjustments to, uh, cut down on or limit. I can't remember strong safety adjustments in the four two five defense to eliminate, um, explosive plays. Now I want to point out that chat GPT studies the internet and nobody's put more crap out on the internet than me. So this is a, on the four two five defense. So this is a benefit to me. That B spits out basically an ASCA report. 
right? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> actually, Joe, it's like you can, can just change the alignment. Your you can change it. You can change his alignment by moving him forward or back, inside or outside. You could change his stance this way. You could change his key reads. You could change. You could blitz him. You could call a different coverage. And I'm like, <laughs> here we go. So I actually included that in the in the presentation for about two minutes because I'm like, it's it ain't bad. Like if you're looking for how to fix a problem and you just go to Chat GPT and are like, how do I fix this problem? It ain't bad. It's you're not now you're not going to use the adjustments. But the the areas are correct, right? And that's a that's a lot of what you get out of it right now. Is um, I laugh because my 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 kids stomping around and, and just saying things, and sometimes they're words, and sometimes they're not, and sometimes they're very coherent and very correct, and sometimes they're not. And I was like, that's exactly what Chat 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 GPT is a two year old, like a very worldly two year old. Sometimes things just get garbled. And there's an arm, like, these are things that my kid would think up. Absolutely. I told my kid, like, put a football on a table full of gears. Like, some of the gears would not be gears, and some of the footballs would not have laces. And, like, you know, <laughs> there'd be a blue good. duck, because I've never seen a blue duck. It's just, that's what we get. <laughs> so there's my level up. I've had a lot of fun with it. I'm going to, I'm, I'm planning to invest. Um, I have previously not put much time into it. And when I have, it's been kind of a failure. I've had success with some tools as we've talked about, but, and I, I'm interested in that tool. Um, but I'm interested in the guts and the, and, and how to make it do things that somebody doesn't made a tool for, which is a lot of, you know, that's a lot of us is like, how can I use this to plan a more effective practice? How can I use this to, um, I tell, I, I actually told my wife, I told, I, I just, Thinking of things I could ask it, I said, tell me how I can shave 10 strokes. Give me a program. I said, give me a program. I have 15 minutes a day, uh, and I can go to the driving range twice a week. I said, give me a program to shave 10 strokes off my golf game. I didn't tell it that I shoot 135. It's ir irrelevant. But it spits out this program. And the first thing is like day, you know, on, on day one, you're going to go spend 15 minutes doing short three to five foot putts. And I was like, that's. That's brilliant. Like, I mean, how many, you know, I, all right, I just cut two strokes off, right? Cause I missed three to five, three to five foot putts right now. I cut those out and it's like 15 minutes of chipping 15 minutes. I was like, this is really good. And then like two days to, at the range for like an hour and it breaks out, like what you're going to hit at the range like this. I was like, I'm not going to do it. It's too much work, but this is really good. I don't want to be good that bad. No, I don't want to be good that bad. <laughs> like, you know, what difference does it make? I'm going to, I'm going to be, you know, uh, you know, six holes in, uh, everything's going to start to fall apart anyway, because I'm right. out here on a recreational trip anyway. Absolutely. Oh, AI, man, it's taking over the world. And we're all just trying to figure out how to harness it. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Um, sweet. Well, tonight we're going to talk about some unbalanced ideas. And so what we want to talk tonight is running gap scheme plays out of unbalanced formations. And I love that what your level up was because you talked about the, um, you know, you had to do it multiple steps or in multiple, um, I don't know, just different attempts. Right. And so I, I love tagging. I'm a big tags guy. And so it just makes me think like, that's what offensive football is for me right now. And defensive is too, but I just, I didn't flush the defensive side of my football brain, but it's just chilling on the back burner. And so, like, I, that's what I'm thinking is, like, we want to be, you know, unbalanced, but that doesn't have to be new formations. That doesn't have to be a new offense. How can we just tag it and make that one extra step we do? So I'm pretty interested to talk about or excited to talk about some of that. Um, before we do, though, let's pay the bills, because if not, I'll forget. Uh, JDFB, go to JoeDanielFootball.com. Um, we have so many things happening, as has been for a while now. Uh, but I'll say that at least you can go to joedanielfootball.com slash rules and get the 40 coach simple rules for football coaches who want to win more games. That's going to talk about things like the leverage principle, the ASCA principle. It's going to give you, uh, I think one of the most valuable things in there is a list of the non-negotiables, uh, the things at each position, one thing in each position that you must be able to do. And the key to those non-negotiables is they take no talent. I will add the only exception being the free safety. Um, and honestly, it doesn't take talent, but it takes it takes a little bit more effort than some of the other guys. He's got to run downhill to the alley as fast as he can. 
Now, if as fast as he can, ain't that fast. It's still better than what most free safeties do. So, um, so the um, I was hoping that that's it. Go to jordanofootball.com slash rules. I'll just add that I was hoping that I could send you while I, while I'm sitting here. I had a chat GPT window open up and I said, draw me a diagram. This is what, this is what chat GPT can't do. I said, draw me a diagram of an unbalanced football formation. It's just a bunch of football players, old school football players, basically in like a weird, they're just all facing the middle. There's a center <laughs> and then everyone is facing towards the center. There's like nine other guys. There might be 11 guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11. And then the center. So there's 12 guys. Uh, three of them are in blue, three of them are in blue, eight of them are in red, and they're all facing towards the center who's, who's in the center of the thing. That's awesome. Like even the, the, what would be the guards are turned facing straight at the center. The eight tilted guards, baby. Let's go. Fantastic. It's great. Um, you can, I'll tell you what, man, I've started consolidating everything. You can go to chamberlainfootballconsulting.com and you can, there you can find the sulfur strong clinic, um, access to that. You can find this podcast, the other podcast. Uh, you can find a link to Patreon where I'm just kind of starting to write thoughts and such for football. Um, this comes out next week, so there's probably already an episode or two up, but I'm just going to start drinking coffee every morning and talking football on the internet. So coffee with Coach Chambo is uh, being birthed just because I'm bored in the mornings. That's the only problem with recording podcasts late at night as I'm sitting here all day. Like I just I want to talk football. But Twitter's gotten to be such a weird place to talk ball because, right? I don't know. Everyone's like thinks that they're a professional. I know I'm not. I know that I do dumb stuff still in coaching. I know I don't have all the answers to X's and O's, and or it's all NFL breakdowns, which I love watching and understanding how those bigger schemes work and tying them back to our fundamentals. But sometimes I just want to watch high school p- coaches be like, "Hey, our." Our right guard was 275 and couldn't move. <laughs> Here's what right. we did to change our offense yeah. to make him fit. Our so, right guard was a 300-pound square. Our left guard was 160 pounds. <laughs> right. Let's go, baby. So, What are you going to do? Um, anyway, run power so, right. <laughs> all, the, uh, all the social media stuff, you can go to chamberlainfootballconsulting.com and find it now. It's still in work in progress. It's under construction, but it's there. So have fun with that. Part one. What is an unbalanced formation? Anything where we have, you know, more than the standard uh, numbers is going to qualify as an unbalanced formation. So basically, you know, if you have, if you were in a straight up perfectly balanced, say like a dot, I mean, a, a double tight. Um, what we would call an ace formation, most people call. Yeah. Double tight, quarterback under center, running back directly behind him, right? That is a balanced, truly balanced formation. But if we have essentially six and five, so if you had a, a pro eye, um, you know, you would have six to one side and five to the other side. That's a balanced formation. As you start to move further um and i would say you know anything beyond that starts to fall into the realm of unbalanced so if i have an i twins um now i have um it's not like it's not severely unbalanced but it's kind of is because we've got two receivers over there split out and i got no receivers over here so it's unbalanced in a in a manner of you know the amount of receivers that we have, uh, you know, true receivers, split receivers. Um, if we run trips, that's unbalanced. Um, if we have a, um, if we shift our backs over, stack our backs to a side, you know, it's unbalanced. So anything where the count, and we talk about the count, if you just draw a line straight down the, the crack of the center, so it's going through the center and usually through the quarterback. Um, we count each side. Uh, anybody who the line goes through is a half a man. And then anybody who's fully on one side or the other side of the line. Um, so, you know, in, in the case of an I formation, the center is a half to the right and a half to the left. The quarterback is a half to the left and a right, half to the right. Fullback is a half to the left and a half to the right. The tailback is a half to the left and a half to the right. So they count as two and two. 
two to the left and two to the right. And then we count up everybody else. The guard is one, the tackle is two, the tight end is three, and maybe we got a receiver out there. So that's four plus the two, that's six. And then we go the other side and guard, tackle, receiver. So we've got three and we add them to the two and that's five. So we've got six and five. Um, really, as we start to get away from six and five is where we start to consider things unbalanced. Um, so if we, you know, I twins where we have, you know, pro, I, pro twins or pro I twins, whatever you want to call it, um, where there's the two receivers to one side and the tight end to the other side. Um, and then, you know, an I formation or even a split back formation uh, is a little bit more, um, it's unbalanced, but it's, you know, no, nobody really makes a major adjustment. We do make a, a significant adjustment to it. That's important. But, um, as we go to trips formations, right? So now we've got, you, let's just say for argument's sake that it's a pistol. So we've got tight end tackle guard, um, or excuse me, it could be a receiver or a tight end to the weak side. Let's say tight. Let's say it's a trips closed. Um, tight end, tackle, guard, half a center, half a quarterback, half a running back. That's one and a half. So now we've got four and a half to the weak side, and we've got one and a half plus tackle, guard, and three receivers. Five. We've got six and a half. So we've got four and a half and six and a half. Now we're getting into an unbalanced formation because the count has left that six and five kind of world. Um, Anything where you do that is going to force the defense, and this is probably the best definition of an unbalanced, is anything that forces the defense to shift. Um, and, and by the way, defenses also fall into balanced and unbalanced defenses as well. Um, you know, 4-2-5 cover three is a very balanced defense, or 4-4 cover three, it's a very balanced defense, to whereas a 3-4 with a rotated safety is not not balanced. Now I've got, I've got a six and five situation. Um, most defenses fall into, even though the free safety is rarely just right down the center, most defenses, the free safety is in both alleys if you're a cover three. And so they fall into five and a half and five and a half is balanced. When we go six and five, if, if you're a six and five type of defense, if I can put you know, with motions and shifts, if I can put six over your five, I've unbalanced you. If I can put six and a half, Either way, I've unbalanced you. Um, commonly what people think of with unbalanced sometimes is with backfields, sometimes with receivers, but commonly what people think of as unbalanced is when we actually move a lineman over or um, cover up a tight end to, you know, to, to have more guys over there. Um, those are more commonly what we think of a true unbalanced formation. We either move alignment over, or we've got so many receivers over here that we have to cover one of them up um, or it'd be an illegal formation. A quads is, you know, more of a, a, a typical unbalanced because we've got four receivers over here. Uh, that's a, that's a really unbalanced. So most people think of unbalanced in terms of the more extreme, but really anything where we shift the count beyond that six and five area, and anything where we force the defense to make a significant adjustment to that is an unbalanced. So I want to start by saying it, it, I love number one communication is very key because when I wrote this up, if y'all don't know, sometimes I just write, I pre-write up the episodes questions wise. And then I say, Hey Joe, do you like these questions? And he says, yes. And then we re hit record or he says, no, that's trash. Erase it. And we start over. But a hundred percent was just thinking Unbalanced is like tackle over or, you know what I mean, a heavy formation. But I love the way you started this episode because I immediately started thinking like, you know what? Trips is freaking unbalanced. Oh, yeah. Like, Absolutely. because we're going to talk because about Because you, you can't scheme. run your base coverage, right? That's right. We're going to we're gonna talk gap scheme and the unbalance. And I was like, does trips matter? And I'm like, well, yes, it does. What's the first thing you do is shift your inside backers over to cover. So immediately this is why i love talking football because you always find a new perspective when people break things down differently in their buckets versus yours or containers or whatever yeah. we're using today so we get, um, we get a lot of teams who will rotate this is you know we're going getting ahead of ourselves we get a lot of teams who will rotate their weak side force away make him yeah. play the deep yeah that matters the world because the count Please. is 
three, uh, it's actually four defensively, but three in the box because we're counting the, the the guy over top of the receiver would make it four. But three in the box, if we see three in the box, if we see three weak, it's on because I've got hats for hats. I've got center guard tackle. You've got three guys. We're going, we automatic stretch week, outside zone week, automatic because hat on hat and we're out the, out the gate. You got to quarter. Look, I'm, I'm going to give it up here because I know that our rival at my school listens to our podcast because that's how this world works, right? True. But our very first trips check is speedo week. Yeah. I don't know what you're in. I don't care what your pre snap alignment is. We're just going to run it and see if you can. Do you have enough people to account for the quarterback keeping or pitching? Because we always end up with that one guy running man to the, you know, everybody goes solo and they run man to the, the one side, right? And like you just said, they roll their weak side force to the top to go quarter, quarter, half busted, right? And now he's supposed to play a half and now you have nobody to come answer for my pitch man. So there you go. The guys that are listening, now you know what I'm going to check. Well, and that's or, uh, that's always been uh, – I, you know, I haven't had to pull it out as much in in the last few years. I think yeah. uh, then we've, we've put it out there so much, but that's always been the argument with trips checks and trips coverages. Um, draw it up against speed option week. Can you defend that? Yep. If you cannot defend it, your, your front is broken because you are – over shifting and you were broken and because the trips is the shiny object right and what does everybody try to do even even taking the run game out of it everybody wants to isolate the single receiver because if my guys are, again going back to numbers and this isn't an unbalanced issue if my guys are 1.5 and your guys are one and you got no help let's go yep. like, I'm, gonna th- I'm gonna throw that fade ball and we're gonna see what happens um I also love that you called three for an unbalanced defense because you think in the world of cover three more so than I do. I'm always thinking cover four quarters. And so three, four to me is the perfect balance to where four, two, five, I have this extra safety rotated strong side that needs a job when I'm trying to run quarters. Right. And so my, my strong safety is extra. So I, I love, I mean, that's just football, right? Right. In your cover three and in in your, um, in your, you're right. In your three, four quarters, you're more balanced up, um, which, depending on how you play your Sam backer, can make you unbalanced in the pass game, right? Right. And, and yeah, so those are those are things there. We, those so are things we have to, them. you know, consider in how we play those defenses and what we do with them. Um, to me, the three, three, you know, cover three is a very balanced defense. Um, I mean, obviously, that's it, that's as balanced as it gets, right? Three, three, cover three. It's just you draw a line straight down the middle. Um, yeah. and it's you know that's balanced as it gets. Um, four, three is an unbalanced defense, right? Even with your, you know, even with your um, uh, we could, quarters, we always run quarters with it. Four, three is more of an unbalanced defense. So, um, which is interesting because I put the mic backer on the weak side, and it actually changes things up. As an initial alignment is a weak side one tech. So he shaded just a little bit weak, but the mic backer is the mic backer. It actually changes the way that we handle defenses. Um, so yeah, that's that's a whole different episode. Balance and unbalanced defenses. Um, it so factors I'm, more so in, the by way the way. It factors more in, by the way, in safety rotation when you start using zero blitzes. Then it becomes a big deal because when you blitz somebody and you run zero behind it, the free safety has to rotate, and now you have a very clear, balanced and unbalanced side, and that's how you want to attack zero blitzes is especially in the past game is to realize that if that safety rotates, we need to, sometimes we check, we want to check, um, uh, check the, uh, um, protection in our system because we want to make sure that our guy gets out. Uh, and we want to, so we want the running back to be to that side and we want to make sure that when everybody gets released, uh, so we have to check protections. We have, to, we want to check the quarterback, you know, checking his read side and that kind of stuff. Um, when I talk unbalanced, I actually, much like I did with my motions, right? I have jet and then I have quick and it's the same motion, but it's either you're getting the ball or you're not getting the ball. So I have to break these things down different in my mind. And so I used unbalanced versus overloaded. 
so my unbalanced is a big guy inside is over, like a tackle over um, overloaded is too many receivers okay. in my in my terminology. So once again, I wrote up this episode with my thinking, and then I love that you just you brought it all home with your understanding. But even trips is an unbalanced, so that's good. Um, yes, so like the you talk about covering up receivers, that's an excellent way to get to unbalanced, right? Because now you have to play the trips, but also I still have a tight end down here. Essentially, it just becomes a lineman. Right. Or but even if he's high detached, school kids are terrible at recognizing that kid is covered up, as even if he's detached. Right, we can run quads. He's attached, and you cover him up. He's almost always got somebody lined up over top of him, especially with somebody you haven't shown on film. Because what do they do? They either say apex two and three or three and four, right? And so there's they're they're pretending he's a receiver, and you know better, right? Anyway, um, and it may take a play or two for the coach to realize it, right? Yeah, and then by then they've not, you know what I mean? They haven't seen it. Maybe you see the formation one time this half. <laughs> Did you right. recognize it and right. make that? And again, film? if it's not something you put on film, yeah, yeah. Um, so, what are the advantages? I know we we kind of wanted. I, I meant to, that was supposed to be part of the first question. What are the advantages of these um, unbalanced formations on offense? Well, assuming that they're, you know, again, um, you know, we talk about balanced and unbalanced defenses, and I want to, um, with my unbalanced and with my motions and with my formations. I want to unbalance a balanced defense. I want to balance an unbalanced defense. And so using unbalanced formations, can I force you either to unbalance, you know, let's just stick with balanced formation, balanced defenses. Can I force you to unbalance your defense? Um, slide the free safety over too far. Now he can't play the weak side alley. Now you have no alley defender or not an immediate alley defender. Can I get you to shift your linebackers? Can I get you to, you know, all of these things, rotate your weak safety, anything like that. Can I get you to unbalance your balanced defense? Um, if I can get you to unbalance your balanced defense, I now have you not playing your base. It's very likely that you're having to make checks that are making it difficult for you to run your blitz package. So I am limiting what you can do. You're going to have to run your base with some basic, you know, base stuff, basic checks, um, because you probably can't run an exotic blitz that you've been working on against an unbalanced formation that you haven't been working that exotic blitz against without making a mistake and leaving gaps uncovered. Um, so that is the best case scenario for the defense is that you unbalance your balanced defense uh, or vice versa. In the alternative to that is I, you do it wrong and you, I go unbalanced. I go seven and four, you stay five and a half and five and a half. And I have a one and a half man advantage. Or I, you know, even if I go six and five, and you stay five and a half, five and a half, uh, if that five and a half, if that half can't really be, so so in most defenses, when we say that the free safety is a half, okay, the free safety is the half. He's re responsible for both alleys. If the free safety cannot actually defend both alleys, and I go six and five, I have an advantage to the six side. That's why most teams run, you know, to the tight end side or to the strong formation, formationally strong side is because the free safety can't really get down, doesn't do a great job of getting down that alley, and you get a numbers advantage. Team's got the free safety stand at 17 yards deep, right? He's a he's a middle of the field um, center fielder, right? He's a pa pass first guy. Well, look, that's fine. I'm a run first guy, so we got a numbers advantage. Because the biggest problem that I have is usually I can't account for your free safety with anybody but a receiver, and if I do that, I'm not accounting for your corner. Now, Against a good football team, I'd rather not account for your corner than not account for your safety. Right. But if you're going to stick him 17 yards deep and he can't come downhill, then I'll just block corner and we'll see your free safety eight yards, 10 yards down the field. Um, so again, the, the, the advantage now comes either by forcing your defense to unbalance, which is the right way to play it, or you don't 
unbalanced and you stay balanced and I now have a numbers advantage. The third possibility is that you over adjust because of shiny objects and I create a numbers advantage back the other way. Um, and so we see that a lot uh, with an unbalanced single wing formation that we've been using on the goal line for years is, you know, for a long time teams didn't adjust because we shipped to it. And then teams started over adjusting because all we ever did because teams never adjusted right was run to the unbalanced side. We ran outside zone to the unbalanced side over and over and over again. And that formation, it was three and a half and whatever that is, seven and a half, the seven and a half to three and a half, basically. Um, and so in that formation, if we saw a count of three, which we got to a lot, as soon as we see three, right, we're going back the other way. And now we've got a numbers advantage. Um, cause we've on, you know, you've gone too far and, um, or even three and a half, we've got a numbers advantage. So, um, you potentially can get them to, o to overshift and then you've got an advantage numbers advantage back the other way. I like it. Um, it, it is a numbers advantage, but I also like the angles, right? Because, um, even if you're a four, two, five guy and you're going to play a tight end in a six, if that tight end is on the outside of a second tackle, what are you going to do? I can tell you what my defense did last year when I taught someone to play it in a six was um, they went further out there. <laughs> they stayed on that tight end. They saw right. a common, they recognized the tight end's number. They said, oh, 42's on the, I better go be in a six. And then guess what that did to the inside of my, my offensive or my defensive line. There was a gaping hole. Um, Two adjacent gaps open. Yeah. Right. B and C gap were wide open and there was nothing I could do. Now we were in a three, four. Mm -hmm. And that guy was supposed to be, we were in a, like a 404 and then we were sliding out to a tight. Anyway, long story short, our guys couldn't make the adjustment because they couldn't even recognize that it was happening. Right. And you um, have to assign that to someone. Yeah. Same thing with just a tackle over with no tight end. He did the same thing. The jersey he's supposed to be seeing is the, what would be the right tackle. He was the left defensive end. All they did was go tackle over. Now it's center guard, left tackle, right tackle. He stayed on the common number, and we once again had too many gaps uncovered. So um, I think that is the advantage is kids, kids get yep. tired. Kids, number one, right? <laughs> it's yeah, no, I mean, it's absolutely years. like kids yeah, are right. the kids are one of the number one advantages. Every coach has a plan for adjusting the unbalanced. Kids yeah. don't even recognize, and they may have taught them that, but kids don't even recognize it. Um, I think the angles are great. If It doesn't matter if you're wanting to gap scheme and kick him, if you're wanting to gap scheme and down block him, if you're wanting to zone block him. Um, you've eliminated, maybe eliminated a double team, but now you can just kick it out and send a guard straight to backer. Like you've split that stack you were trying to double team and combo to. Um, so there's just a lot of things going on with angles and space, which is what we're looking for, right? An offensive ball. Where's the open grass? Where's the open gaps? That's what we're trying to throw and run to. So if I can create that, um, I think that is a huge advantage. I want to move on here because I, I know we've been recording already for over 40 minutes and we're only on question one. First, I want to talk about athletic speed and movement because, um, guys, it's still good for you. I think, what is this going to come out? Very beginning of July, yeah. right? I just told Joe before we hit record that I'm going to start installing it with my kids. July the 8th, we come back from dead week. Dead period, There's yeah. still time to get it in and get faster and get better. So athleticspeedmovement.com. Um, I know that if you've listened to this podcast at all, you've heard it a thousand times now. And that's great because it's still true as it was on day one when we said it, uh, as it is now. Del Basquette is the original speed guy in the NFL. He didn't, he didn't do it for track. He started it for football. And we're talking speed. We're talking cuts, agility, all the things. Joe just got a compliment at a NFL slash what well, you said it was the U University, University, University of Virginia camp, but I mean, it's yeah, the NFL guys there, Chris Long and right. Um, and Chris Long loved our guys, like you know, this, this twitchiest dude, this people dude a lot of money, the, yeah, twitchiest, twitchiest people at the camp, or just as twitchy as any of them. And that's and these, I mean, and that's most of these kids have never played a varsity game, it's not like we sent our best of the best, right? There's the kids who wanted to go. They're the kids who've been there working, and, and it's, right. it shows. 
it absolutely shows. Um, so look, I'm a data driven person and I have Joe and I have been working trying to get you guys to use athletic speed movement and I'm still looking for the data and that's what I'm going to steal from him and I want to use for my kids. We're talking 40 times, shuttle times, all of that stuff because that's what coaches want to buy a product. They want to see what it actually do in numbers. But the change is already speaking for itself in things that aren't numbers. This is not the first time Joe's gotten complimented. Um, get the program, get it installed, make your people faster from the O-line back. Guys, it's everywhere. Oh, hey, look, we had our, um, uh, while we're on the subject, we had our um, uh, girls soccer coach come out to watch the program. And, I, and I, we, now we were on week 12. So she brought like four or five of her girls. And I said, you know, they, they go through it, but this is going to be tough for them. Because week 12, by the way, is tough for our guys. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, speed burst, lateral D cell, uh, short cycle burst. Like, I mean, it is it is simulating a play, essentially, the change of direction, the, cha- the not the change of direction necessarily, but the, um, the acceleration, deceleration, lateral movement on, on all that stuff. And, um, and then I went, you know, after that, I went over and just went through the, 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 the core drills, the day one stuff. Um, and showed it to her and, and, and like, I honestly believe, I hope she, I hope she, she was talking about it. You know, I don't know when we can do this. We, I said, I don't care. There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing that these girls can do that will be more valuable than this. There's, yeah. there's no way if this is all you get done. So, uh, and Dale has worked with every sport. So that's right. You know, not just football. So, you know, one of the things that you may think about when you, when you're looking at this is not only can you do it in season and I'm going to release a 90 minute practice plan built around teams doing installing this in season and how to get it done is very easy um, it, for you. Uh, but you can also, you may want to go to your athletic director, go to your, your high school coaches, you may want to go to your athletic director, go to your other programs, because this is a, so this is something that could be run program wide. That's right. Or school wide. I should say. Athleticspeedmovement.com. Go there today. Get the thing. Start getting faster. Question two. Why do gap scheme plays look so good and how are why they operate so well out of these unbalanced? And we're talking on the O-line unbalanced. But I mean, honestly, receivers too. So unbalanced, overloaded, whatever you want to call it. Why does why is gap scheme so good there? I think but you know, one of the big things is you start to get guys displaced. They're, they're not as comfortable. You know, we tell our defensive guys, and I always assign one linebacker um, to, you know, the will linebacker is is checking for if there's a tight end on his side because that means he needs to make a heavy check. The Mike linebacker needs to be checking f- to make sure that the center of the five fat guys is the one with the ball. That's, that's the rule that we look for. Center of the five ineligible numbers. The, whoever the middle of the five ineligible numbers is, that's the center. Right, not the guy with the ball. So, Mike linebacker, you get out there, you make your strength call. You need to check and just make sure that there's only two guys to each side of this of the guy with the ball with ineligible numbers. Quick check. You need to check, and uh, if you only see one or you see three, it's unbalanced. Uh, and so then you just need to, all we do is we call out whatever yet, you know, let's say that there's a tackle over well, whatever that guards number is. Hey, 63 is the center, not the guy with the ball. 63 is the center. So everybody has to adjust. Um, but even by doing that, your defense is, is in a unnatural position. We've forced you to move. It's, it sounds simple. Hey, the middle of the five fat kids is the guy with the ball, is not the guy with the ball. There's some, that the center is the middle of the five fat kids. Now I'm a nose guard who's lined up over top of a guy without the football in his hand for the first time in 60 snaps, right? Uh, or I'm a linebacker who's now like just feels disgustingly far away from the quarterback and the running back compared to what I normally am because I'm shifted out to essentially a five technique. Um, or a 50 technique instead of a 30 technique and it, talking four two obviously um, so you know the, obviously if we get the two open gaps like you said if if I've got the three technique lined up over top of the guy that's next to the center and I've got the six technique lined up over top of the 
guy with the tight end number who is two full linemen away, yeah, power is pretty good because <laughs> you know we can do whatever we want now, and we don't block anybody that's standing out there. We don't care about them. So obviously, that makes power a dominant game. Counter becomes a dominant game when you start shifting too many guys over to that. Um, power counter is part of our single wing package. Uh, you know, those are things that we look at. Um, you know, trap, if I've got like a one and a five, it's like, yeah, trap's pretty good. Like, kick out the five, <laughs> bust it up in there. Like, let's go. Um, so those are the things that we can, obviously, those are the things that make gap scheme really good is when the gaps are bigger than they should be or when the guys are just out of place and it's a little bit harder to get where they want to be. So if I can go unbalanced and my, you know, I would say guard, if I tackle over and my tight end can play like a tight end and you shift everybody over, please let me play like a tackle and you shift everybody over and I've got three linemen to a side and I've got a guard who can still pull and do all of that stuff. And I I've just put you in a bad position because you're just, you've, cre I've created a lot of space and, um, and I guess that to me is like, it's just, it's just putting you in a weird spot. I think um, I think the reason they work so well, and you you almost alluded to it there, but I really like the fact that now we have a shortened or a widened edge. So you talk about your D line shifts to the new center, but he's still not the guy with the ball, right? So if I have, we're going to be in pistol this year, but if I'm like power is good to that, but for a different reason for me, that that reason as well, the fact there's two gaping holes is awesome. But um, I'm also thinking about how far away that force defender is from where I'm trying to run the ball, right? So I'm going to start, we're going to pull and kick the guy that's already too wide. And I'm a guy, I don't care about anything outside the kick, man. No. Right? I don't care. No. I'm kicking Money's and going inside. underneath and that's all there is to it. So if that dude's already extra wide, He's got to come close the distance, which is going to make him have to do more than he's supposed to. And the force dude is even further away. Um, same thing with counter coming back. Yes, he's a little closer to the action, right? I mean, he's I, I don't like it for that matter. But like you said, we really want to use uh, counter when they over, um, over adjust, over rotate. Right. So now that guy that I'm trying to kick is probably slid back to five yards, Dying. almost head up on my guard. I'm going to down block, even if he steps forward immediately and comes to fit that outside gap, baby, you're still getting kicked and we're still going to the house. Like it's, I, I like what it does to the space around those end mans on the line of scrimmage. I'm going to get you further away from me if I want you further away, or I'm going to bring you up real close to me if I'm really wanting to talk about trap or, um, you know, whatever, those are even better then, right? Because now right. we were going to hit a gap anyway. So you've just brought the fight right to us. We know exactly where that's going to be and we're going to hit it quick. So um, I don't know about, um, I, I guess when you start putting in these plays, you're probably adding a little bit to your teaching that week or these formations. When you start wanting to tag and be unbalanced because you don't want to run power if they're overloading it, right? If they're over shifting. So maybe you have to teach your quarterback what he's looking for. Hey, here's a, cute, a few things. I don't know. Maybe you get this as a week that he gets the ability to, hey, we're going to switch it to counter here. You know, kind of an audible. I don't know. You, you got to trust, you know, you got to know what your players can do there um, because we are making the game different. And so he's going to have to be able to call play here and there. But um, I think you do that anyway, right? With your reduced and and uh wide sides well if we if we're doing red and white sides but typically if if we if we're giving the quarterback free reign um you know for example our single wing stuff um that's a formation we run every week every game and we give him rules so the rules are you know if if we shift and we shift to it if we shift and they don't move you run six. Six is the base play. Six is outside zone to the shift side to the right. 
So we, we have six. Okay, if they shift, if we shift and they don't move, six is the call. If we shift and you're not sure, six is the call. If we shift and you count three backside, seven is the call. Or let's say um, if we shift and you count three backside or there's nobody outside, seven is outside zone the other way. You call seven. Okay. If we shift and we've hit him with six and we've hit him with seven and now they're just defending outside each way, you call two, which is inside zone. And it's and you just dive straight ahead into the gaping hole. And really, we don't. There's not a lot of counting to this. It's like where is the space? Right. And we do have a four and a five, uh, five counter. So four is, you know, we always shift to the right we, until later in the season when teams start to. We need to do something different. So four is power to the right, and five is counter to the left. Um, we would call that when there's essentially off tackle area stuff. So we got a lot of guys playing outside. We got guys playing inside and there's this C gap, B gap bubble. That's when we go to the gap scheme. So that's when we get the really bad misalignments. That's when we go four or five, but you know, honestly we could just run six out of that. Yeah. If I'm putting in something that weak and just as a general rule, just to let everybody know, we have an unbalanced that is always in. And then we have unbalanced that go in week by week. There's one that's always in, and there's one. Now we're now we're talking unbalanced. I'm not talking about trips formations and, and that you know the, the simple unbalance. I'm talking about tackle overs and, and that kind of stuff. The one that goes in that week only has usually two plays off of it. It has a they didn't shift, or it has a base play, and it has a. They, they lost their minds play, right? <laughs> we figure they're either going to do this or this. And we game plan it based on what we see on film. And we say, okay, I know I'm getting into question three now. We look at, which is fine because we need to. I yes. look at what they're doing on film and I say, okay, if we get into this alignment, I think we'll get this look. So the base play is the play that's going to attack the look that we think we'll get. Now, the look that we think we'll get may be a certain adjustment that they've shown. It may be the correct adjustment that, you know, on paper, if we've got a good discipline team or the base play may be the play that we think that they just, they, they're not going to know what to do and it's going to be open. Kind of depends on how much we respect their coaching staff. Yeah. I mean, you know, quite honestly, how, how prepared are these guys? Not how much we respect them as people, but as pre preparing it's these players. And of course, that also goes on experience. You know, if they're starting a bunch of sophomores, it's like, yeah, well, let's go. Let's unbalance the hell out of them, and let's just let's see what happens. But there's almost always just two plays in that in that particular package. Um, and and I personally prefer to shift most of the time, but we'll also try to sneak in an unbalanced here or there that is kind of a hidden. Uh, that is usually something like covering up the tight end. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So you go tight end wing, right? We go tight end wing and then um, put a receiver over there as well. What do we get? Um, we go bunch formation, uh, you know, that, that kind of thing. Bunch is a very good unbalanced look. Um, yes. So those are things that you can get into and just line up in it and see what they do. And if you've got one that you don't know what they're going to do, generally I would I, well, I would always call the base play. So we've got our we've got our base call. We've talked about this before. This unbalance is likely going to be on the script. It's going to be in the first ten play script. Um, when I get to it, which is not in the first ten plays usually, because we've talked you know we talk about the offensive play caller system, how we work through a script. Uh, we've talked about it on the podcast before. There's actually a video in the offensive play caller system where Kenny talks about it too because he does the same thing. Um, as you work through a you know the script and we get to that unbalanced formation, I just want to see how you line up to it, and I'm going to run a relatively safe play out of it. So I'm not going to line up my unbalanced and be like run double reverse because we think you know, it's not, no, no, no. we're going to line up in our unbalanced formation. And we're going to run power because we think that we're going to get a three and a nine, and that's going to be pretty good for us. Um, I like the tight end wing with twins outside of it. 
And I like it even more because everyone's using what I call wing, but the Kenny is in my area made it famous, the tight end wing with twins away, right? But now you trade that tight end wing over to the other side and watch the outside linebacker lose his mind because he doesn't know what rules to use. Do I come down and play on top of this wing or do I go out there and cover number two? Because coach, you told me to cover number two, (laughs) right? Um, So you're talking about shifting and that's the last question is, you know, how do we game plan this? So how are we getting there? How are you using it against the opponent? What are you looking for to make it? Um, And I'm with you. I'm going to be a script guy this year, but not like 10 play script. I'm going to use three plays in each of my first three drives of each half. So that's 18 plays I'm going to have scripted and everything else we're going to answer questions, right? And we're going to see how that works. Maybe it works great. Maybe it doesn't. But um, this is definitely going to be one of those going to be in there. And so, like you said, you're going to have a safe play. But if it hits big, we're going to run it again. And if it doesn't, oh. that because you had too many people over there. And so we got the opposite we could come right back to. Um, By the way, when you, I, so here's a game plan. Just on that. If you run it and it works and you have your call, go back and listen to um, episode uh, 300 years ago with Bill Let's Legg. Um, Bill Legg. Uh, I don't even know what Bill Legg's doing today, but at the time he was the offensive coordinator for Marshall. Um, very entertaining guy, very good clinic speaker. Um, Bill Legg had a call heard for Marshall that was run it again, and he said it was his favorite one word call. This is when this is when one word calls were getting popular. He was like, "We have a one word call heard." They call it like eight times a game. He's like, every time a play works, I heard, run it again. But here's the key. When you heard, you don't shift. You go straight to the ball and you line up already shifted. Yes. So that is an important game planning piece. And you explain to them, we're going to run this play. We're going to shift to it. And if we run it and it works, I'm standing over here yelling, heard whatever your one word call is to run it again. And there's no shift now Yeah, run to the ball and snap it. And what's going to happen more than likely you may get it off one more time. You're probably getting a timeout in the first quarter. Yeah. And they, you've now, you've now burned a timeout for them. That's That's one of the most effective uses of these is holy crap, burn a timeout. Uh, that would be episode 159 from uh, the spring of 2016. So huh. eight years ago. Huh. That's later that. than I expected. <laughs> um, I If I'm out looking for something, I generally want to look for, is there an interior lineman that we can take advantage of? Maybe someone's playing a three tech they shouldn't have been if they're an even front team. Or maybe their nose is not the iguana that he should have been. Mm-hmm. Um, is that a guy I can take advantage of? But is he maybe the iguana that he's supposed to be? And I need to get two people on him mm-hmm. so we can get a you know an extra an extra blocker down by going extra wide and moving his help around. Um, or if there's a defensive end that's super aggressive, then I know he's just in attack mode. Kind of the same thing I was talking about earlier. He's going to get comfortable, and his comfortable is going to be I'm going to go around the outside edge so I can just move that edge away from me. Um, Joe, you talked about earlier, free safeties, right? They need to play the alley on both sides. I have a chance here to move that alley even wider. You talk about, is it possible? If it's not possible, I have a numbers advantage. Well, he's going to line up balanced on wide receivers because that's what he's been taught. He, he doesn't care what the O-line's doing generally, right? He's going to split all of his threats so he can run his cover three or his cover one. Um, even if he's a quarters guy, I think that we can still get a, a, a displacement advantage here. So we're just going to create that space, widen those edges once again, like I've talked about earlier. Um, but just taking advantage of super aggressive guys that we know aren't thinking about football. They're thinking about attack or the ones that uh, maybe are too analytic and now they get froze, right? They can freeze them with, um, what is it? Paralyzation through analyzation. So they're going to be super worried about what's going on. Paralysis by analysis. That's the same thing I just said. I don't think paralyzation is a word. Paralyzation is a maybe it's not. It, I might, it could be. I don't Whatever. know. I don't know. The, the, I'll the, Google the general 
term is a paralysis by analysis. I'm not a general guy. I know. I know. Hey, look, it's not. You know. Okay. Paralysis by analysis. Freeze him up because he's going to overthink it. So I, I don't know. I think that's just somewhere you gain an advantage. Paralysis You're just asking kids to look at something uncomfortable. <laughs> get out of my, get out of my little thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Is there, um, we talked about moving to it, motioning to it. Um, even if you want to get into that quads world where it is what I call, uh, you know, an overload, mm -hmm. even if it's four detached receivers, yes, you've not moved your O-line around, but I think gap scheme still works because we've already talked about the overshift. You're moving your four adjustment you're moving your linebackers. Quads. Yep. Um, even if you take here, here's what I like. <laughs> Even if you take your wide receiver from the weak side of trips and send him over, who's the force guy now? It's a corner. Well, half of the offensive side of the ball is just trying to figure out how I can get my running back versus your corner. So this is just yet another way I can do that. I can run duo. I can run outside zone and, and you reach everybody. And, you know, if, if I get a read that gets me out there, um, that's a lot of this side of the ball is just figuring out how can I get my ball carrier on a kid that you put there because he can't tackle, so he can't play safety. And now he's he's on the front lines, man. He's in the trenches, which means he ain't, which means he's running away. He's going to go play cover three right now. Coach, I, I thought we had cover three called, man. And, uh, and we're out the gate. I think one of the most significant things that you can do to a defense that requires no talent and I'm all about finding things that require no talent is to make them move pre-snap, uh, which is why I prefer shifts. Um, but also if they recognize late, you know, they're moving. Um, it's the off chance that they immediately recognize the unbalanced and line up in it, that they're fine. But any, sh any sort of unbalance is going to usually force guys to move and we want to move their feet. And of course, if they don't move, they're outnumbered. So we either are creating a numbers advantage or we're creating a, an advantage by making your guys move and not letting them be stationary and comfortable. So we're making the defense uncomfortable, making the defenders, we're making young defenders uncomfortable. And that's that's a big advantage for us. Um, so then I look at how game plan wise, I look at how do I expect you to adjust? Uh, and this is where I get to my Roger Holmes story. And I almost forgot uh, Roger Holmes in a clinic talk. One of those old glazier nine o'clock PM, two sessions on a Friday night. Everybody's on their staff getaway. You know, there's only three speakers because everybody's gone to the local gentleman's club because they're, they're They got a night away from the family. And I'm sitting there listening to this guy talk about wing T. And um, Roger's stuff is available, by the way, at allaccesscoaching.com. And um, Roger talked about unbalance. He does a lot of unbalance. There's a lot of fun stuff with wing T and, um, down in, in Georgia. And um, Roger said there are five ways to defend unbalanced. And I've used this. I've written, I've written manuals on this. I've... I've I've gotten mileage out of it. I have never sold it, but I've gotten mileage out of it. Um, I said, there are five ways. He said, there are five ways to defend unbalanced. Number one, you can do nothing. By the way, that's the most common. It's not the best. It's not always wrong, but that's the most common adjustment that you get is a nothing because they didn't recognize it or they didn't prepare for it or whatever. Number two, you can move one man. So you talk about your twins, uh, 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 I twins formation pro twins mm -hmm. and that's corners over. You may also do that with a tight end wing potentially, but you, you corners over that. So I move one man corners over. I just move, just move the corner over to the other side. We man those guys up and everything else is a nine V nine game. Now that's one, that's another example. Um, number three, which is the base way that we adjust on balance is slide everybody one man. So your typical, you know, typical unbalanced formation where we've got three linemen to this side and, and what we were talking about before, the center of the five fat guys is not necessarily the guy with the ball. Okay, it's the, it's the middle guy. The center is the middle of the five fat guys. 
So we slide everybody one man, slide the entire defense one man. Number four, you can just slide the defensive line and leave the linebackers. Number five, which we've talked about a lot, you can slide the linebackers as we see a common adjustment to trips, slide the linebackers, leave the defensive line. Five ways to adjust unbalanced. You need to look at your unbalanced formations that you're going to use and consider how they are going to adjust and understand that there are only five ways. And once you have an idea of how you expect them to adjust, if you can say, hey, look, either they're going to move everybody or they're going to move nobody. And that's pretty common. Um, if they're going to move everybody or they're going to move nobody, then now I've got to play for them moving nobody and I've got to play for them moving everybody. And so that is the game plan for that particular shift. Um, that is the game plan for that particular move. Um, I will add one more, and then we'll wrap it up. In one season, I had, no offense to the other guys, great kids. I had one really good offensive lineman and four guys that were holding down a spot and doing the best they could. Um, and I would use on balance because, again, we ran power to the right and counter to the left because my guys holding down – their job, some of them couldn't pull, skip pull effectively. And so when I wanted to run power to my best guy, who was my left tackle, I made him the tight end. And so now I'm running power and he's comboing down against an odd front, especially is what I wanted to do because he's comboing down on the four tech and <laughs> blowing that guy down. And my guy who's always the kick out is pulling and kicking out. My tight end's back there. He's trying to do a hinge, but you know, he doesn't really do that very much. But hopefully it works out because you're you're having to check out of whatever you were gonna do because of the unbalanced. And so that created the advantage for me of having my combo guy not be my tight end, but be my 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 drive man on the combo, not being my tight end, but being my best offensive lineman. Um I would also use that exact same thing for pass rush things. Like if you want to rush your best defensive end off the right side edge, all right, let me get my tackle over there. And I'll let him pass set your defensive end instead of my not as good tight end. And I'll right. keep my tight end in backside as pass pro on your crappy defensive end. Right. So there's just little things that we can do. Um, that, you know, kind of give you an advantage, but some, Sometimes it is just let me get my best lineman over here to help out. Let me overload this thing with 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 a guy that I want over there. Um, so yeah, that's and if there's anything else that you want to know about unbalance, you know, just ask Chat GPT. I'm screwing around <laughs> with talking to humans. <laughs> oh God, Chat GPT is the answer. All right, man, let's play the oh, bills. Get out a diagram because all the guys are facing the center. <laughs> We checked. Uh, we checked all the boxes tonight. It is unbalanced sure. though, because there's eight guys in red and three guys in <laughs> nine guys in red and three guys in blue. Oh God, boy. It's Canadian. Canadian. Go to JoeDanielFootball.com and get into JoeDanielFootball.com. Uh, backslash rules. If you want the forty rules of forty things that are going to help you win a football game this year, one of them will. It's like the ultimate golden nuggets of all football clinics put into one list, and it's in PDF format, so it's you know it's pretty easy. too. It's a really nice looking. Really nice looking document. Look at that. Um, for me, suitable for uh, me. go to sulfurstrong.coachesclinic.com, buy a ticket. It's $20. Okay. Listen, I know inflation's high and I did not inflate the price of the stinking clinic. <laughs> okay. We're just trying to help some people who everything they own got taken away from them in a tornado twice in one night. <sighs> sulfurstrong.coachesclinic.com. Uh, social media. Oh, wait, sales opening and closing. This will come out beginning of July. We will be opening up um, some form of JDFB premium coaching systems enrollment before the season. Whoop, whoop. Um, which would be a bit kind of forget that it's closed. It is know? closed. Yeah. Listen, once you're an insider, you don't, you, you forget. You don't have to worry about it being closed. That can't um, uh, get access. And then uh, I believe we'll be. I don't know the other thing, but the big thing would be um, football coaching. Uh, 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 the, the JDFP premium coaching systems will be opening up at some there point here in the near future um, for you before the season starts to get in there. 
What's always open is athleticspeedmovement.com, where you can make the fastest, the twitchiest of the bunch. If you haven't checked it out, there's a there's a deal now. By the way, a deal. Get over. Go check out the deal. There's a deal. Social media. I am at Coach Chambo OK on Twitter slash X. That's basically where I do all my social media. And you can find me on Facebook, Daniel Bryce Chamberlain. It's just Coach's Clinic. And uh, because I don't Facebook, you can check out my wife's stuff at Adaptable Physical Therapy, which is also on Facebook and Twitter. She's really big into Instagram. I know you're in Instagram and I tried, but it's like another thing right now. And I don't really want another thing. Do you just do the videos? Do you do pictures? What do you, because it used to just be pictures. Now it's like there's an art. Like you got to put up a video that's no more than 38 seconds long. It's got to have music and then like a flashy thing, a scroll, uh, and then people find you. Mm hmm. There you go. I don't have a team. I have one and I will still not use it. And then patreon.com backslash Chamberlain football consulting. It's where you can go help me raise my kids by giving me money to talk to me about football. Joe, where can we find you? Find me at football info on Twitter. You can find me at Joe Daniel football on Instagram and TikTok, uh, facebook.com slash Joe Daniel football and Joe Daniel football.com slash YouTube. If you want to watch the podcasts, visually we gotta figure out how i can put your youtube podcast shares on my youtube maybe like 30 percent of the traffic podcast is at the fbcp on twitter slash x um go there to see things but really uh go to at football info because that's where shim shares all of the podcast stuff sure until i give her this login and beg her to make it better if this is your first time listening to the Football Coaching Podcast, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. You can find us on your favorite podcatcher, especially Spotify and Apple Podcast. I don't know why I saw it, especially. It's on all of them. Just go on them. Uh, if you're on Spotify or Apple Podcast, please leave a review. We would like five stars because it makes us look the best. But if there's something we're doing wrong and you think four is necessary, go ahead. If it's three or lower, just talk to us. Let's see if we can fix it and change your mind. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Football Coaching Podcast. Remember, coach simple, play fast, win.